Well, I hope your first walk out in the field actually worked and the game that you made uh, functioned correctly. Uh, something I will show you now is how to work with requirements. So the way we have things set up right now, the key that's sitting down here uh, is simply hidden, which means if uh, a player happened to walk across that spot, they, they would get that key. Uh, they just happen to not know how to get there until they see our map. If we want to formalize that a little bit more, that's when we can use requirements. Let me show you how to do that. The first thing I'll do is actually turn off hidden. Um, this means that right now, if a player would play it, it would just show up on the map like normal. And the key here now is going to be to go into edit requirements. And that's going to bring up our little requirements editor. Let me show you how we can set a requirement so that you have to have seen that map before this key is available to you. It's actually very simple. We'll click the plus button to add a requirement. And then in this requirement type here, we have a bunch of options. Player has or doesn't have an item. Player has viewed an item. Uh, player has not seen or has seen a node. And that's an uh, other word that we use for plaque. And it actually will probably be pulled out in the next version or so. Or player is, has or has not seen an NPC or a non-player character, a character. So what we'd like to do is since we set up that plaque, we'll say player has viewed a node. And this means that the player will have to view, uh, well in this case, the only plaque that we have, the mapped key, before it'll appear. And if we hit close and save, you're all set. And in this case, as soon as the player has seen that, that uh, plaque, they'll have their GPS update and they will see uh, um, the actual key on their map. And that's really all there is to it. While we're here, we'll do one other interesting thing, and that is, let's change this character around a little bit to make them want to have the student do a mobile data collection activity. So let's go to James and open him up, and instead of saying that he wants a key, let's say, go get me a photo of the fountain. Now that's interesting. At this point, the player could go out and use the, the camera app, and they could take a photo of the fountain. But what we could do at this point is have the system respond to that and know whether or not they took that photo. And here's an easy way to do it. Let's have a character actually swap out with another character. Since we only have the greeting to work with, uh, and the greeting can't really change for a character, we'll simulate the, the greeting changing by having two different characters. So the first character, let's come up with a clever way for them to disappear. And one way you can do it is to set up requirements on that character so that the player has never seen the character before. So effectively, as soon as you've talked to the character, uh, the character will disappear. So let's do, let's set a requirement here. And the requirement is, player has not viewed NPC, and then James. So again, this means if the player hasn't seen N the NPC James before, uh, it'll appear. But as soon as you've talked with James, James is going to disappear. So you only get to talk to James once. So to kind of make the sense out of that in the narrative, let's change James again and say, go get me a, a photo of the fountain. Until then, uh, I'm getting lunch. So the player will walk up to James. And as, as soon as they do, they'll get prompted with James saying, get me a photo. And then James will disappear, uh, apparently out to lunch. Now, let's create a second character now, and we'll also name it James, so it'll appear to be the same one. So, character name, James. I can use my little hidden description here to go after a photo has been taken. And the greeting will be, great job. That's exactly the shot I needed. Let's save that James. And then let's place the second James out on the map pretty close to where the first one was. So how do we get this one to appear? Well, there's a special requirement I didn't show you at the bottom. If we edit requirements, we can add a requirement that the player has taken uh, some a snapshot or some sort of media item. So this means if if uh, this requirement is met, the player has either uploaded a photo, created an audio clip, or created a video. And more than just creating one, if we click on this area where we were specifying kind of the properties last time, this time it'll bring up a map when we've selected that, uh, that it has to do with player uploading media. 
And if we zoom in a little bit, we can pick the region where we want them to have to have collected this media. Here, satellite view will definitely come in handy again. So what we can do is place this little marker right on the fountain. And that's a little glitch that we're aware of. It kind of resets the view, but you can see it is still placed correctly. And then we set a range uh, in which the player has to be when they take this media clip. Let's make this kind of nice and open, just in case. So uh, I think 100 meters may be a little big. How about 50 meters? Great. So for this character to appear with its greeting, the player has to go out to the fountain and be within 50 meters of it and take a snapshot. And then this character will appear. And that's all there is to it. Go ahead and give this a shot yourself and, and uh, see how it goes. Thanks a lot.